Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it so much. This video, we're going to paint this Forever 31 witch. She's a young witch and she's going to stay that way, uh, unlike us. So anyway, the um, surface that I used is an 8x8 eight eight unfinished wood wall panel is what it's called. It's by Doris. Doris. And um, you can find it on Amazon, and you also might be able to find it at your local uh, Michaels or Hubby Lobby or craft store. But it's just a, um, an 8 inch by 8 inch unfinished wood plaque. Now you could paint it as a frame here, but um, I decided to use it backwards this way. And um, so we'll just see what we can come up with. So again, thank you for joining me, and let's go have some fun. All right, uh, bare wood here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a coat of um, evergreen. Of course, deco art colors. Um, love deco art. And uh, feel free to substitute colors if you don't have the ones I'm using. But I'm just going to take a big brush. This is a one and a half inch brush that I got from the brush guys on a really good deal. And um, I'm going to just give this a coat of evergreen now it doesn't have to be opaque it you can see the wood grain through there and that's okay because that's just going to add to the interest in the background there i go again with my keywords adding interest to the background so we're just going to paint this you can go ahead and paint the sides too and i will probably fast forward through this part because basically you're just slapping paint on this piece of wood. Okay, so we've got that painted and as you can see it's not opaque. I can still see wood grain through there. I'm going to give this a quick sand. Just to knock down some of the roughness. I love the sanding block. I don't think I even own sanding discs anymore. And uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get yourself a little saucer or a bowl or something, and you're going to need some 91% uh, iso isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. And what you want to do is you want to put some, you need to have a little bowl that's big enough for you to get your fingers in. So we're going to put some alcohol in there and have that set there. And then I'm going to get some Irish moss. And let's see, I'll give you a little view of the palette there. So I'm going to put out some Irish moss and again with my big brush. And I'm going to um, thin it down just a little bit, not a lot. Okay, and then I'm going to just kind of brush this on horizontally. Again, it doesn't, you don't want it to be opaque. You want it to see that dark green in the background. Um, and you don't want it to be thick, too thick. You just want to slap it on there really quick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my fingers in the alcohol and I'm going to splatter. Alcohol all over this. All right, so this has to dry. Um, you can use your heat gun and um, hurry it up, but I will uh, turn the video off, dry this and come back. Okay, so I'm back. I dried this. Also, while I was gone, I went ahead and gave the side edges just a quick wash of the Irish moss, and I applied the pattern for the um, little witch on here. Now, the next step we're going to do, it's optional, or you can choose to do it with stencils, uh, but we are going to add some more interest to the background, and that's why I put the pattern on, because I, I don't need to add interest to parts that I'm going to paint over. So anyway, I like to use a stays on um, permanent ink pad and I like to use Timber Brown. Black to me is too harsh. 
Um, and so I always kind of lean towards the timber brown color. And I also um, use some uh, rubber stamps. These I happen to get from my sister-in-law. She works for Stampin' Up! And this is called Timeless Textures. And as you can see, it has all these different little texture stamps in it. But if you have stamps at home that are small designs and textures and things like that, feel free to use those. Um, you don't have to use the exact same ones that I use. So anyway, um, I love this, um, this uh, circle one right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink that puppy up. And I'm just going to add some stamps here and there. I'm going to avoid stamping in the face because um, it, it'll bleed through the base coat. And um, let's see, what else do I like? I, oh, I like this, this kind of a, a floral looking scrolly thing. And let's see, let's put one here. Um, should always do threes at least threes and that one didn't come through all the way so we'll make it a little different we'll put it over here all right and then there's one more little guy i love this little guy um i don't know it just looks like little splatters and so just here and there add some interest to your piece all right so, and um, if you wanted to, you could, um, and I did this, but I just did it at the end, um, you could take your rubber stamps and stamp uh, some on the sides. And I, I did do that at the end of mine, but I'm not going to take the time to do it now. So, let's put this to the side, and we're done with that. Then the next thing I'm going to do is going to use one of my favorite little... Um, tools for adding interest and that's Punchinello and Punchinello you can get this on my website it's um, it's the sequin waste it's what's left over when they punch out sequins so it's a, like a metallic ribbon and um, I sell it in pieces like foot and a half pieces for a dollar or you can buy yourself a whole great big old roll that will last you and all your friends forever um, on Amazon. But if you just need a piece for doing a few things, a foot and a half is a, quite a bit and it'll last you a long time and it's only a buck. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, stencil some random clusters of dots around the background. Let me see get the original piece so you can see and um, so I just picked a few places I think five places there where I just randomly stenciled uh, clusters of dots and um, I didn't want to use white but I wanted something lighter so I picked up a little um, warm white and a little Irish moss on my sponge and I like to use cosmetic wedges for, to stencil with and so I'm just gonna lightly stencil some areas with that Irish moss warm white mix all right that looks pretty good so we'll stick this away and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to float some shading around the outside edges and around the witch herself with evergreen. So let's just dry these dots real quick. I don't want to wipe them out. And as big a brush as you can get in, in we're just going to float shading. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and um, I will come back when that is done. All right, I've shaded around the witch, but I thought maybe you guys would uh, like a little refresher on how to uh, float shading. If you don't, just fast forward through this on your own. But anyway, I'm using a large 
a three quarter inch brush. I, I like big brushes. And um, all I'm doing is I'm corner loading that brush with evergreen. And then I'm going to my palette and I'm blending it out. I wanna blend it out pretty good because I, I want this to be a nice soft float. And evergreen can get kinda dark. And all I'm gonna do is come along the edges. Now I'm not being real particular about this float. I just want to get some color on there to darken up those edges. So as you can see, I play with my floats. I go back and forth. It's not just one little uh, continuous line. So and I've got some rough wood there that I have to fill in. Anyway, so just a quick float, and I, I did the same thing around the witch. Um, I wasn't real particular because I'm going to base coat over it. It's much easier to get that shading behind her before you base coat things in than to try to um, base uh, flay, shade around stuff. All right, so that looks pretty good. So we're going to move on and we're going to paint her head and her neck with coral shell and um, that's this basic straightforward base painting. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll probably base in her hair with a spice pumpkin. So I'll do those two things and then I will be back. All right, I'm back and I've based in the face and her little ears and her neck with two coats of coral shell. It's still not opaque completely, but that's okay. There's lots of stuff that goes on top of it. And I gave her hair one quick coat of spice pumpkin. I did base her forehead and stuff underneath her hair because your forehead is underneath your hair and it would look kind of funny if you left that green. Um, so um, we're not going to work on the hair right away but it's easier to base the hair in around these things before they're painted in. So what we're going to do first is we're going to dry brush some highlighting on our face and neck with warm white. And um, I like to dry brush with um, a Langnickel short round or a Dynasty um, short round brush. They're about the same. And um, it's a sable brush. It starts off pointy and it ends up getting rounder and rounder the more you use it. And so I will show you how I like to dry brush and then you can go ahead and dry brush like that. You can try it or you can dry brush any way that you'd like. Anyway, um, on my palette, I have some warm white already. I'm gonna stay out of that green. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick some up on this uh, short round brush and I'm going to scrub it around on my palette in a circular motion. I'm changing directions. And what I'm doing is I'm working that paint into the bristles a little bit. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my towel that I keep back here and just kind of wipe it off a little bit. Then I go to this part of my hand and I start scrubbing it in a circle on my hand. It's not going to hurt you unless you push really hard. I mean, you know, don't stab yourself. But as you, when you hit this initially, it's cool. And as you rub it around, it loses its coolness. It doesn't get warm or hot or anything, but it loses its coolness. And that's usually a good indicator that you've taken enough paint out of your brush that you can go to your piece. So I'm gonna dry brush some warm white down the center of the neck. And you see, I have to scrub pretty hard to get that paint off there. And that's the idea. You don't have water in this brush to move the paint, so you have to scrub the paint. And when I, um, when I need more uh, paint. I just go back and go through those steps of loading and wiping it out on my towel and scrubbing it on my hand. And I'm going to dry brush a little bit on her ears. And I'm going to go on her forehead and down the bridge of her nose. I'm going to go above 
her eyes here. Basically, everywhere on her face, just kind of avoiding the elements of her face. Okay. So it doesn't take a, a, a whole, a long time to do this. But you just want to get some dry brush warm white on her face. Now she kind of looks pasty and weird because she doesn't have eyes. But then don't wash your brush out. I just want you to wipe it out. And I want you to get some dragon fruit out on your palette. You don't need a whole lot. You don't even need as much as I put out there. And you're just going to pick up some dragon fruit on that dirty brush that still has the warm white in it. And what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush some nice, soft cheeks, round cheeks on her. And we can see those right here. So, and we're going to dry brush a little bit of this red, this dragon fruit pink on her nose. Okay, so let's get her some cheeks. And they kind of go at the top of her smile line and under her eye, but out to the outer edge. So make them kind of big. She's healthy, remember she's young. And I need some more paint. She's got nice pink cheeks. Some nice round cheeks. And then we need a little bit of color in her nose, just in the tip of her nose. All right, that's good. Now you can wash your brush out. You can go ahead and paint in her lips with dragon fruit also. So just a quick base coat of dragon fruit. Now just the lips, not the smile lines. Looks like her bottom lips is getting a little bigger for me. All right. Cool. She's starting to look cute. Now we're going to um, float some shading and um, I like to mix my own shading color but you could use, I think it's called desert clay. But I like to mix, I call this Sandy's Flesh Shade. And what I've done is I've mixed um, two parts of coral blush with one part of burnt sienna. And that's the colors that I like to use to shade with. And I'm actually gonna give myself a clean palette here so I have room to blend. And so I use it so much that I mixed up this big old bottle. But basically it's uh, coral blush plus burnt sienna. It's two parts coral blush to one part burnt sienna. And it gives you a nice shading flesh color. So I'm going to float shading on the neck and the face. I'll start by floating on my ears next to her face. Start with easy ones. And then I'm going to float on her neck under her chin. I'm also going to float on her neck next to her shirt. Let's see, I want to go under her lips and under her nose. Now on the lips, I'm gonna start a little bit out into the smile line, but not the whole smile line. But I'm gonna go under her whole lip, 
and then take it out on the smile line a little bit. And I just kind of tap it with my finger to blend it there. I want to go under her nose. I'm going to go under her hair. and across her forehead. And let's go back down to her neck. We want to float down both sides of her neck. And then um, I want to go actually down the sides of her face and around the bottom of her chin. So the whole um, face basically gets shaded. Here again, you can see I play with my float. I don't just do one solid float. All right. Now I'm also going to take a liner brush. I like to use a number one liner mostly. All right, I'm going to make a wash of this shading flesh. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll go a little closer in so you can see this. I'm going to line a shadow above each eye. And what I do is I start about halfway down the inside of the eye and come around the top and as I come around the top I flatten it out and I come back down the other side and come back up to the point. So on this eye I'm starting about halfway down on the tip. When I get around the top I flatten it out and then I come back up to the tip. So I've just put a shadow above the eyes a little bit. So now I'm going to uh, put out some warm white and I'm just going to float highlights in a couple places. So just a little bit of warm white. I'm going to float on the outside edge of her ears, inside her nose a little bit. Let's go get that other ear. And then I also want to float above this shadow that I put on above on her eyes, above her eyes. So I'm just going to follow that shape and add a little bit of a warm white highlight above that. Doesn't have to be real strong. And I also did a faint little highlight above the smile line and the lips. You don't want this to be real strong. Just a hint of warm white. So, just going to come back and do a couple of little spots of uh, shading because if I did, these, uh, did this first, then the warm white highlight would wipe it out. So I'm going to go inside the ears. Just give her a little um, inside of to her ears. Okay, easy peasy. So we are going to go back to her lips. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to line a highlight on her lips. And you can kind of see it in here. It's no big deal. And all I did with that is I mixed a little bit of warm white with dragon fruit to make a lighter value. And I just kind of lined. I'll get back on camera there. That would be good, wouldn't it? And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can see it's pretty messy for me. Now we're going to float some shading 
in the corners of the lips and to separate the top lip from the bottom lip with red violet. It's a really pretty color. It's actually the only place I use it, which is sad. So I'm just going to go here in the corners. I think I want a little bit more color. There we go. Turn it over to get the other corner. And then I'm going to float on the bottom lip, color up against the top lip, just to separate the lips. And then we're just going to add a straight warm white highlight to the lips. And I just kept that towards one side, actually. All right, we have lips. What you want to do now is with thinned shading mix, we're going to line the smile lines and the end of her nose. So I'm just going to, with my liner brush and that shading mix, just going to very thinly line the smile line. I always like to put a little like set down at the end of my smile lines just to finish them off so they're not left hanging. And then just a little line around the end of her nose to define it a little more. All right, we are going to paint her eyes in lamp black and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. And as you can see, we painted in the eyes with lamp black. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to paint this large crescent shaped stroke in the bottom of each eye. Now it doesn't have to be a crescent stroke. You can just paint it in with a few strokes. And um, I want you to be aware it takes up like at least a third of the eye. Don't make it real skinny or she just won't look as cute. So make it a pretty wide uh, crescent stroke. And I also want you to notice that it doesn't sit all the way down in the bottom of that black part of the eye. You're going to set it down to leave just a little rim of the lamp black along the bottom there. Okay, so turquoise blue and a liner brush. And what I want to do is I want to paint in those crescent shaped strokes. And this is how I like to do it. I like to line that one in down that line in at the bottom and then I'll come and line this one and then I just fill it in. Easy peasy. And the deal is if you mess it up, you get a stroke you don't like, this is black. You can always clean it up and make it look better. Okay, line in this bottom. And then I'm going to line in that part and fill it in. And now this can be done while um, this blue is still wet. We want to line a highlight through the center of those uh, strokes. So I'm just going to pick up some turquoise blue on my liner brush and pick up some warm white and just make a lighter value turquoise blue and I'm just going to line a highlight through the center of those blue stripes or blue strokes stripes strokes whatever all right cool now, what we're going to do is we are going to dry brush a little bit of warm white in the black part of the eye. So again, with the dry brush, you just want to break up that black part of the eye. 
then with a liner brush and lamp black, we're going to paint the eyelashes. And I'm going to show you how I like to do that. But you can just line them in individually if you'd like, or um, do it the do it how I'm going to show you. I, I'm into the quickest and easiest way to do this. And so I've thinned down some lamp black, and with my liner brush loaded, I'm going to set it down inside the black of the eye, okay? And then I'm just going to push it out and squiggle it. And that gives me some cute little lashes. So I'm going to go over, and I do that, I start in the center of the eye. So I'm just going to set it down and push it out. And squiggle. And you also want to give her just a little touch of lamp black in what would be considered the corner of her eyes. And then also you want to squiggle a few little eyelashes on the outside edge of her eye. Okay, cute little eyes. And then we're going to uh, take our liner brush and warm white again. And we're going to um, line these highlights in the black part of the eye and a little bit we're going to tap into the center of the blue part of the eye. So just a couple little highlights. And a tap, tap, tap. And then a couple more highlights. And another tap, tap, tap. All right, so there are the eyes. Now we want to give her a couple of little eyebrows, so before I forget about them. And those are with Heritage Brick. And it's a, it's a wash. It's You want to thin it down pretty good because you don't want these eyebrows to stand out. They just need to be there because she looks kind of funny if she doesn't have eyebrows. Um, I usually try to say this is a technically correct face, so you need eyebrows. But it's not a technically correct face. We all know that. So I'm just giving her a couple little eyebrows. Think like your eyebrows. They're not... Um, perfectly, well, unless you have them tattooed on or something. Um, they're kind of loose and, and uh, hairy. That's what eyebrows are. All right, we are going to uh, work on her hair next. And so you're going to need a few colors, Heritage Brick, Summer Squash, and Spice Pumpkin. And we're also going to be using a quarter inch filbert comb brush if you're using low cornell it's a filbert rake brush and so i'll show you how we're going to be using that to do her hair and i will be back in a few okay i'm back and i have to explain that i did the whole rest of this video without my microphone on so i'm going to be doing voiceovers so we are here to work on her hair now and we are going to be using our quarter inch filbert comb brush um, again low cornell calls them rakes and i like to use these brushes to do hair or straw or things like that because i get to use them and i can turn them up on the edge and get waves and curls so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how i load my brush and we're going to be using a uh, heritage brick first and so I pick up some water and I thin down my paint now I like to pull paint and keep the puddle attached to my main paint some people like to pull a separate puddle but I keep mine attached that way I can just pull more color into the puddle as it gets low so I'm going to um, pick up some heritage brick on my brush and I'm loading it pretty full all the way to the ferrule and then I'm going to kind of smash it down and spread those bristles out a little bit and that will uh, give me a little bit better um, 
look and definition into those lines. So smash it on your palette and then you can try it on your piece or on your palette and see if you're getting some nice lines. So back to her, we are going to uh, start by painting the hair that starts from behind her ears first. And um, this is Heritage Brick. You still want to be able to see the spiced pumpkin in the background, but this is just the darker value of her hair. And you want to be sure to also kind of pull a little bit off the edge of that spiced pumpkin so you kind of blur it and um, uh, soften it a little bit so it's not such a hard edge. So I'm just going to continue to stroke on her hair here and what I'll probably do is I'll fast forward uh, through this. I'm going to go from this area and then I'm going to stroke on her uh, bangs and then I'll go to the other side and stroke on her hair. Alright, so we have her um, dark value of hair done. Now we're going to work on the lighter value. So this is the highlights here. And so I'm using Summer Squash and I'm going to load my brush the same way I did with Heritage Brick. Load it full, uh, smash it to spread those bristles out a little bit, blot it a little bit. And I'm going to go and add some lighter values. And this is going to go uh, basically all over. You'll still be able to see the dark and you'll still be able to see the uh, spiced pumpkin in the background, but basically we're lightening up her hair a whole lot. It's like she was out in the sun all day, and believe me, it's hot enough here it could lighten anybody's hair. So I will fast forward through the rest of this and meet you at the other end. <laughs> It'd be great if we could paint that fast but uh, now we notice that her hair is really light so what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to um, add some spice pumpkin which was the base color on top of this um, yellow to orange it up again so no worries and, and you can always do this whenever you're painting hair or straw if you lose uh, the color you're going for like if uh, in straw if you're going for a yellow you would go back with your base yellow. So this time we're going back with our uh, Spice Pumpkin to add some of the orange back to it. And see how nicely that adds the color back in. So once again, we're going to fast forward. <music> The next step in the process is going to be floating some shading to drop the hair that's behind her head, behind her head. So we're going to do that with floats of Heritage Brick. I'm going to start up here um, behind her ear, but not up on the bangs, uh, uh, just behind her ear and pull down around the ear and down the sides of the face and the neck. And that is going to drop that hair behind her head a little bit, just like your hair is behind your head sometimes. And you also want to float around uh, the collar that's on top of the hair. So here on the end and across the top of that collar. 
that's what that is, in case you were wondering. So now I'm going to go to the other side and do the exact same thing. I'm going to float uh, from behind her ear and down the side of her face and then next to her neck and again around the collar that's on top of the hair. All right, after you've uh, shaded around the collar, we want to go up to the hair that's coming out from under the hat brim. And we're just gonna float a little bit of shading there. And it's not across the whole uh, set of bangs, it's just where you envision the hair coming out from underneath her hat brim. So you wanna leave that little curl um, kind of on top. So you see, and I kind of float, uh, walk that color out in the little V area there. So I'm going to go to the other side now and I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of envision where the hair is coming out from under the hat brim and uh, float a little bit in that V area there. So there we go. I'm also going to take a little bit of heritage brick floating and kind of define some uh, waves a little bit more. Um, I like to do this so you kind of get a picture of movement in the hair. So just pick out a couple of waves that you want to um, make stand out a little bit more and add a float of heritage brick. And so I should do three and so I'm going to pop another one in here on the right side. And you can add more if you want or not do it at all. It, the choice is yours but I always just like to do that. And the next thing we're going to do as after I fix, I'm going to deepen the V areas around her neck too a little bit with some more floats of heritage brick just because that's so far back behind her collar and behind her head. So the next thing that we're going to work on is we're going to line or, or stroke on some more highlights in her hair. Just uh, some summer squash and I'm just going to pick certain little places. It's not going to go everywhere. It's it definitely it's going to go on the uh, bangs a little bit because you want them to be really forward. And uh, so I'm going to highlight the edge of those bangs a little bit. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to highlight some waves and some curls here and there. Especially the ones that you um, made uh, stand out a little bit more with the float. So it's not a lot, it's, it's not all over like we did the first time we um, did the summer squash. So just pop those little bangs out a little bit more highlighted. Just think like hair, think like um, how you have highlights in your hair and how they're not everywhere. So. And then one of the next things I'm going to do, and you'll understand this if you've ever taken a class with me, um, you'll know that I sport a blob of pink hair in the front. And so I wanted to give her that style too. And just it's just for fun. And so I'm going to take some dragon fruit on my comb, filbert comb, and I'm just going to give her a couple of pink streaks in her bangs. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to or if you want to do it you can do it in any color you have on your palette. You could do turquoise, you could do Irish moss, um, the purple, whatever you'd want. And I just did a little bit. I didn't do a whole lot. Just enough to give me the satisfaction that she's got pink in her hair too. Moving on to the hat now, you want to paint the hat brim and the top of the hat with graphite and the hat band with turquoise blue. And we'll be back. Okay, back with the hat band and hat painted. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to dry brush some highlighting on the hat brim and the top of the hat with turquoise blue. I always like to use uh, a turquoise 
a color on a, a black or graphite. So dry brushing on the hat brim, I'm going to do it across basically the whole hat brim. So just through the center of it, but across the whole thing, just to brighten that up a little bit. And then I'm going to uh, pick up some more paint and I'm going to dry brush on the top of the hat. Now I'm going to follow the shape of that hat. As it goes up, it's, it's wide at the bottom and it thins down at the top. So I'm going to dry brush accordingly. And, um, and then I'm going to go to the point or the end of the hat. Again, that's a kind of a triangle shape. So I'm going to dry brush accordingly. But I am going to attach it to the dry brushing that's on the front part of the hat. Now, don't wash out your brush. Just pick up some warm white on your dirty brush, and we're gonna dry brush a brighter highlight in these areas. And since it's a brighter highlight, it's gonna cover a smaller area. So you're still gonna go through the center, but not quite as wide, not all the way across. And then on the top of the hat, you're gonna go not quite as wide, but in the same areas. So just a quick, dry brushed highlight on your hat and that just makes all the difference. All right, the next thing we'll do is float some shading with lamp black. I needed a little more lamp black on my palette. And this is just a regular side load float of shading. You want to blend it out well. You don't want it to be a black line. You want it to be a nice soft black float. And the first place I'm going to go is on the inside of the hat brim next to her hair. So I'm going to do that on both sides. I think uh, Lamp Black uh, really makes the graphite um, stand out and um, you can't really shade black so graphite works best. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to float across the top edge of the hat brim. Now I kind of start on the chisel and then as I get to the wider part of the hat brim I flatten that out and then I come back down to the chisel as I get down to the other edge. So a nice soft black floats. My next place is going to be on, on the hat, inside of the hat brim, underneath the front of the hat. So we would do that on both sides. I'm going to let that area dry and I'm going to pop over to the top of the hat and float some shading on the top of the hat above the hat brim, hat band, not brim. So just a nice float across there above the hat band. And then I'm going to continue on the top of the hat. I'm going to float in this little uh, crease where the the end of the hat is folded over. So you want to go right next to that uh, front edge of that hat. And that needed to be mopped out a little bit. It was a little harsh and so um, I am known to use my mop brush to soften my floats. I'm going to go down the front edge of the top of the hat, down to the hat band. and kind of fill in that V area a little bit. And again, mopping it to soften it. So now I'm going to go back to the brim and I'm going to float along the bottom edge of the inside of the hat brim. So basically all three sides, that whole triangle gets uh, shaded in with lamp black. And that just gives you the look as of it as going back around behind her head and behind her hair. Okay. 
So now I'm going to go back up to the top and I'm going to pull a float on the other side of the top of the hat and this kind of does a back to back with that float that we did to make the crease. And then we're going to float along the bottom edge of the bent over part to the point. And then we're going to go across that top edge of that uh, bent over part to the point. And uh, I move my piece around a lot. Uh, sometimes I take the long way to the side I'm getting to. So I hope I'm not making you dizzy or anything. But I'm going across the top edge there and walking that V area out. We're going to go ahead and work on our little spider next. Um, so you're going to need uh, warm white and lamp black and I think all the other colors are in your palette. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some liner consistency warm white and we're going to line the little web that the uh, spider is hanging on. So just a nice quick little line of warm white. Down to his behind. And then I'm going to paint in the spider, his body and his head, with lamp black. Mm -hmm. And they are just two ovals. One of them is, the body is just a bigger oval than the head one. And I'm also going to line his little legs, all eight of them, with thinned lamp black because there's always somebody that will correct me if I don't put enough legs on my spider. So just some quick little legs. What I like to do is line it and then when I get to his feet I kind of turn him down and s set the brush down a little bit to give me a little bit uh, like of a little foot there. And of course just like eyelashes one side always goes better than the other. So he has eight little legs. And now you want to do this while he's wet. Still, you're going to pick up some uh, turquoise blue on your brush. And we're just going to line a little turquoise blue highlight across the top of his behind and the top of his head. And it's going to blend together and get kind of a gray blue, and that's OK. We just want to make a difference between his head and his body. He has two little eyes. And those are just dots of Irish moss. And I just do them with my liner brush. And then he has a little bit of dragon fruit um, painted on his little behind. So pick up a little dragon fruit. And you can't see that, and I apologize. Don't know what I was thinking, but there it is. So he has a little spot of dragon fruit on his behind. So that is our spider. Now we're going to work on our hat band. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a number six flat and I'm going to add some stripes to the hat band. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load my brush. And here I'm going to show you the stripes. And you can see. Notice the stripes start just a little bit above the top edge of the hat band. So I'm going to pick up some spiced orange, spiced pumpkin, spiced orange, and I'm just going to paint some stripes. And again, I apologize, but you'll see it soon enough. So again, start it just a hair above the, the top edge of that hat band and just a spiced orange stripe. It doesn't have to be opaque. There's a lot of stuff that goes on top of it. And just kind of space them out so you can get a couple other stripes in there. All right, and now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of summer squash on that dirty brush that still has spiced pumpkin in it. And I'm going to just uh, line a highlight on the top. So just start at the top and pull down. A 
All right, and then wash your brush out. And the next color we're going to do is Irish Moss. So in the same fashion, I'm going to line the stripes with my number six flat and Irish Moss. And they go right next to the uh, Spice Pumpkin stripes. Now if you want to decorate your hat band differently, if you want to add dots or checks or whatever, please feel free. This is your piece. I'm going to pick up some warm white on my dirty brush and I'm going to line the highlight with the Irish Moss Warm White mix. And the final stripe is going to be done with Purple Petal. So pick up some Purple Petal and line that stripe. So you should have a little bit of a blue stripe left in between these sets of three stripes. And you're going to pick up warm white on your dirty brush and line the highlight on the purple stripes with the purple petal plus warm white mix. And you want to let these stripes dry a little bit. And you're going, um, I probably pulled out, yep, I did. I pulled out my handy dandy craft heat it tool and dried those stripes really quick. And then we're going to dry brush highlighting across the center of the hat band with warm white. And that's going to be across all the stripes. So um, don't avoid any of them. Just dry brush warm white across the whole center of that hat band. And it's pretty wide. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some true blue out on our palette and we're going to float some shading with true blue and that's going to go down the sides and across the bottom of the hat band next to the hat brim and blend it out really well. True Blue is a pretty color and um, it's pretty transparent as it is, but blend it out really well. You don't want this to be a True Blue stripe. So up that side, across the bottom, across all the stripes, and up the other side. So there we have our hat band done. We're going to move on to her uh, shirt and her suspenders now. So you're going to paint the shirt with purple petal and the suspenders with turquoise. All right, shirt and suspenders are painted. So now I'm going to use another one of my favorite little uh, tools, and that's called drywall joint tape. And it's it's got round holes in it. So I get this at Lowe's. Um, so if you want to go buy yourself a whole big row, roll, of this um, you can or again I sell it on my website. So I'm going to stencil little Irish moss dots all over the shirt and I'm going to go ahead and use a brush this time to stencil with because the area some of them are so small and it's, it's just easier to control using a brush. So we're just going to scrub some dots on with Irish moss and this it, it doesn't show up a whole lot in the big scheme of things once you get the shading on and everything, but um, it shows up enough that it makes a difference in there and it adds some interest to the shirt. So there we go, nice uh, Irish moss dots. We're going to go up and do this side of the shirt. And then up onto the collar a little bit and you don't have to line these up they don't, you, they don't need to be like little soldiers just however you lay your um, joint tape down is how it ends up so um, if you have a different stencil you want to use that's fine too 
just use something small. All right, one more uh, little spot, and we'll be done with that part. All right, looks pretty good. So now what we're going to do is wash out our brush and dry it really good. And then we're going to dry brush some highlighting onto this shirt. And I'm going to do that with warm white. And I'm going to treat each little section of this shirt as its own section. So you want to dry brush on just the sleeve here. And then you're going to move over to the shirt on that side of the suspenders and on this side of the suspenders. And as long as we're dry brushing warm white, we might as well go ahead and do the suspenders too and save a step. Up on the collar and down a little bit. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Up on the collar on the shirt, on the suspender, and on the shoulder and the sleeve. We're going to put some lavender out on our palette and that's what we're going to float shading on our shirt with. Lavender works well on this purple petal and also on purple cow. If you don't have purple petal you could use purple cow in place. So the first place I'm going to go is down the top of the sleeve and then across the shoulders on either side of the suspenders. And I'm going to go to the other side and do the same areas. So across the top of the shoulders and down the sleeve. And then I'm going to go to the uh, next to the, the collar to set that in and I will be doing next to the suspenders. So I'll do one side and then I'll pop over and do the other side, uh, the other suspender. and also next to the collar. And that just kind of makes that collar look like it's um, folded over and standing up. And I just wanted to mop that out a little bit and soften it. Now I'm also going to float a little bit of this color on the other side of that suspender and go across and do the inside edge of the other suspender. I also want to float to uh, separate the sleeve from the main body of the shirt. Now there's not much sleeve on this side, but you need to put a little bit in there. And then I'll go to the other side, which you can't see, and uh, float on that sleeve to separate it from the main body of the shirt. There you can see what I did. I'm also going to touch a little bit of this color into the um, bottom of the collar where that tiny little uh, point is. So basically I just kind of chisel edge it or, or tap it in there until it gets wide enough where I can do a float along the bottom edge of the collar. So I'm coming up that back edge and then across the bottom and I'm also going to come up across the end of that collar with the lavender. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of tapping it into that uh, tiny part and then pulling a float up the uh, outside edge of that collar, the bottom edge, and the end. Now 
I'm going to do one little highlight float across the top edge of the collar with warm white. You want to blend it out well. You want it to be a soft warm white float. So it's just going to go across the top edge of each side of the collar. And that just kind of pops it off of her hair a little bit more. So not a big deal, but just enough to make a difference. Okay, I felt like the shirt needed a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my stylus and I'm going to add some dots of dragon fruit with the small end of my stylus. Uh, you, you could do this with your brush, um, how, whatever, but what I want you to do, there's no pattern, it's just kind of random. I just want you to make sure that you keep your hands out of it when we work on the rest of this piece. So just um, add dots randomly on the shirt and I think that just helps to add some more interest and make it a little bit more fun. I'm going to continue putting the dots on the shirt and then I'm going to put the pattern on for the lettering and the numbers. So I will be back. Alright, I have the pattern on for the lettering and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my number six flat again, the one we use for the stripes on the hat, and I'm going to paint in this these numbers with lamp black. And in, this is just basic color book painting. So I will probably um, stop the video and come back when I have the numbers painted in. Okay, the numbers are painted in solid lamp black. Surprisingly, I don't do any dry brushing. Um, I actually tried and it took away from the letters more than anything. So what I am going to do is I'm going to load my liner brush with thin turquoise blue and I'm going to outline each letter and that's just going to make it pop a little bit more. So I always like to go along and line um, my horizontals first. There aren't very many horizontals on this. And then I'll come back and I'll line the verticals and any diagonals that I have. So just a quick outline of turquoise blue around each of the letters. Whoa, look at me go. I sure can line fast. Now I actually just put it on fast forward because I didn't think you needed to sit through all of it um, in regular time. So um, just a quick outline of turquoise blue on those letters and you can see already how much that makes it pop and also just a quick note when you're doing curves and stuff watch where you're going not where you've been it's always easier all right the next thing we're going to do is we're going to line a highlight on this turquoise blue stripe and you can just use your dirty brush, it still has turquoise blue in it, but you want to pick up some warm white and you're just going to line this highlight through the center of each line, each individual line, so um, it doesn't have to be perfect or straight or exactly the same size, it's just something to add a little bit of pop to that outline. So I'm just going to speed the video up here a little bit um, but I wanted you to see where I did the highlight. The next step is going to be to float some shading on the background behind the numbers and we're going to do that with soft black. So you want to uh, blend it out really well um, and just float next to the numbers. It doesn't matter what is behind it. If it's the green background, the hair, the face, it doesn't matter. It's going to get a float of soft black. And so you want to make sure that it's really blended out well. And if you need to, you can always come back with your mop brush and soften it even more. I'm going to stop the recording and come back when I've completed this floating and show you how it has helped to pop the numbers up off the background. Alright, so you can see how it's just kind of brought them forward a little bit. So now we're going to go up and work on the lettering for forever. And I've applied the pattern. Um, the F, I traced the whole thing and I got tired of that really quick. So I went back to my old ways and I just like to line the tracing 
through the center of the lettering and then I, I know what direction the letter is going to go. So you can either trace it completely or you can just line through the center. I'm going to take a liner brush, flatten it out a little bit so it's more square and I'm going to paint these letters with summer squash. So most likely I will fast forward this now. Alright, so we have the letters all painted in with summer squash and I don't ever really like to leave lettering alone too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to line a highlight in the top half of each letter with warm white. So I'm going to take my liner brush and the same one that I used to, to uh, paint the lettering and I'm just going to load it with warm white and I'm going to just line on roughly. It doesn't have to fill up the whole um, yellow part. If you see yellow through it, that's fine. But I'm just going to line this warm white into the top half of each letter to act as a highlight. A little bit more fast forward action for you. I wish I could paint lettering this quickly. So we have highlighting, so the next obvious step would be to float some shading in the bottom half of each letter. We're going to float the shading, we're not going to line it because I wanted it to be a little softer. So we're just going to float Spice Pumpkin in the bottom half of each letter. So you want to blend it out really well and then just come to your piece and float in the bottom of each letter and you can see I, I play with these floats also. I kind of float it in and then I pity pat it up and walk the color up the letters a little bit. So here I noticed that I didn't put the stirrup on that part of my R so I'm going to go ahead and add the stirrup. So see you can fix things in the middle of other things. So Let's just fast forward through the rest of this shading and we'll start with the next part because you know I, I, I can't leave lettering alone. I have to keep working on it. So that looks pretty good, but it's still not quite the way I want it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a shadow on the background, much like we did with the uh, numbers. But this is going to be with our liner brush <clears throat> and a wash of soft black. Now I'm going to line the shadow to the top and left of each letter. So I'll zoom in close so you can see what I'm talking about here. And so I just make a wash of soft black and I'm going to the left side so wherever there's a left side or a top, I'm going to line this wash of soft black. Now this is a little bit darker than I like, but I think it'll be okay. And you're going to go to the next letter with the O. You're going to just do, there's only one little area that's a top, but we're going to go to the left side. And then we're going to go to that little top and then the left side of the inside of the O. And you can see already how that's helping to pop the letters off the background even a little bit more. And you think that would be enough, but oh no. I'm going to add one more step when we come back.
All right, shadow's done, and you can see that's already helped a little bit, but I really felt like it needed to be a little bit crisper. And so um, I'm gonna take this Sharpie Fine Point black pen, and as you can see, I'm drawing my shadows, drying my shadows there. And I'm gonna take this Sharpie and I'm going to outline each letter. I'm gonna do that between the shadow and the letter. So not on the shadow or outside the shadow, but on the letter. And all this is gonna do, it's just gonna make it really crisp and make it pop even more. So I know it's hard to see because my hand's in the way, but um, when I back off, you'll see how much better that letter F looks as in comparison to the rest of the letters. So it just looks crisp and um, it just pops even more. So you could do this with thinned lamp black and your liner brush, but I took the easy route and did it with a permanent black ink pen. Now you could use um, a Pigma pen. Um, I wouldn't suggest an, uh, an Identa pen because even the, the small side is a little bit too fast. Fat. Surprisingly, I'm going to call that lettering done. And so there's just a couple more things we're going to do, and then you'll have this piece complete. And what I want to do is I want to spatter it lightly with some spiced pumpkin, and then again with warm white. And um, I just felt like it needed something else. And I'm going to do that spattering, and I'm going to try to avoid her face as much as I can. Now, if you want to, you can cut like a little... Um, mask and cover her face, but um, I didn't. I just kind of avoided her face. And so I like to do the, I call it beading brushes, uh, a form of spattering. And I load a flat brush with some watered down spice pumpkin, and then I take it and I tap it against the ferrules together to um, spatter with. So I've done the Spice Pumpkin, and now you can't hardly see it, but really it's there. And now I'm going to do some Warm White, and I do the same thing. Now you can see the Warm White, and I, I kind of like it. It just kind of dresses it up a little bit. And you can see how easy it is that way to avoid the face. So there you go. Let it dry, sign it, and you've got yourself a cute little witch. Forever 31, how I wish it could be that way in real life. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you had a great time. I'll see you next time. Thanks.